Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so today I'm going to present this work with Elita and Arthur. Uh, the title is 3D Cabinet Digital Rock Reconstruction Using Progressive Growing GAN. So uh, deep fake images are no longer uh, new concepts these days. Uh, so here are uh, a pair of uh, videos. Uh, one of them is a deep fake. So if I play them, um, can you spot which one is the fake one? So if I like keep replaying these two videos, uh, we can observe that the mo mouse movement of the second video is a bit unnatural. Therefore, the second one is the fake one. So uh, basically, the facial expressions in the first video is checked and transferred to the second video. And the second video looks very convincing and realistic at the first glance. So similarly, we can also generate Deepfake digital rock images. So here are uh, two groups of uh, micro images of the cabinet samples. One is fake and the other one is real. Um, so so far from our bare eyes, it is very hard to tell the difference between these two groups of images. Um, maybe if I don't tell you, you cannot uh, spot the fake group. Um, actually, uh, those images, the images on the right are the fake ones. So um, the realism of those images are quite uh, amazing. And I want to know how we can use them in digital rock physics. So this is the outline of this presentation. Uh, so I will first address the two questions, how to generate those deep fake digital rock images and why to generate them. Uh, after I define the purpose of generating those deepfake images, I will show the experimental results and the conclusions. So let's start with the first question, uh, how to generate those deepfake images. Um, so we generated those images using GAN. Uh, the, the full name is uh, Generative Adversarial Network. It has two competing neural nets, uh, a generator and a discriminator. So the generator takes random latent vectors that input and outputs fake objects. The fake objects can be images, text, or music. And the discriminator takes the real and the fake objects as inputs and predicts the probability of inputs being real. So during training, uh, the discriminator would uh, working on improving its ability to separate the real and fake objects, while the generator would on improving its ability to generate realistic images, uh, realistic objects. So during this uh, adversarial training scheme, uh, the generated objects will become more and more realistic and it, they can fool the discriminator. Um, so <coughs> despite the uh, popularity of scans, they have some limitations like uh, the low, low resolution, and limited variation of the generated images. Also, the chaining process is not very stable. So um, this progressive growing GAN is proposed to conquer those limitations by Keros in 2018. So this is um, PGGAN, and uh, I'm going to introduce the chaining strategy of PGGAN. So the chaining um, it starts with low resolution images of four by four. So uh, the generator uh, generates uh, low resolution images first, it's only four by four. And the real images are downscaled to match this current resolution of four by four by average pooling. So uh, after the chaining loss stabilizes, um, convolutional layers operating on eight by eight spatial resolution are added to the generator and discriminator at the same time to increase the resolution to eight by eight. Uh, so as the chaining goes on, um, more layers operating on increasingly larger spatial resolutions are added to the generator and discriminator progressively and asynchronously. Uh, and uh, the resolution 
increased to 1024 by 1024 at last. Um, so this chaining scheme um, stabilizes and enables the, gener the synthesis of high resolution images. It also speeds up the chaining because most iterations are done at lower resolutions. And uh, many uh, researchers have demonstrated that the uh, semantic concepts are encoded linearly in this latent space. So util uh, based on the linearity of the latent space, we can uh, uh, edit the images very efficiently from latent space, such as image interpolation and manipulation. So this is the crucial advantage of GAN. <coughs> So in this work, we use PGGAN to generate those deep fake digital rock images. So uh, let's move to the next question. Why to generate those uh, images? So, um, so in digital rock physics, uh, it, there are two stages. The first stage is to image the 3D microstructure of the rocks. And the second stage is to do numerical simulations of different physical processes within those uh, digital objects. In this way, we can obtain different rock properties. So uh, the accuracy of the estimated rock properties is highly dependent on the uh, image quality uh, of the digital rocks. Uh, we, want, we expect those uh, digital rock images to be large size and high resolution to be more representative of the real rocks. So here are the two uh, normally used imaging techniques. Uh, the first one is X-ray micro CT and second one is SEM. Uh, X-ray micro CT images the 3D structure of the rocks and then the image resolution is in micron scale. The size of the image is in millimeter to centimeter scale. For SEM, uh, it only images the 2D surface structure of the rock samples. But it provides a higher resolution in sub-micron scale and a larger image size in centimeter scale. So these two types of techniques actually complement each other. And both imaging techniques uh, would suffer from a trade-off between the image resolution and the size. So it, it make, makes it very challenging to acquire high resolution, large size image using those imaging techniques. Mm. And also the imaging process is very expensive and time consuming due to the high expenses of those imaging uh, machines and also the high sampling rate during imaging. So um, one approach to relieve the pressure on those imaging techniques is 2D to 3D reconstruction. Uh, where the 3D structure of the rocks are reconstructed from available 2D images. So uh, if designed properly, the 2D to 3D reconstruction method can improve image quality by increasing the size and the resolution of those available 2D images. Um, so there are two types of traditional methods. So the first one is stochastic method, which is to uh, re re reconstruct the 3D structure based on the spatial statistical information contained in the 2D cross-sectional images. Um, however, this method is very time consuming. It takes at least tens of hours to reconstruct one multi-million voxel digital rock. And also the reconstructed rocks are simplified models compared to uh, the real rocks. So another type of method is process-based method. So it reconstructs the 3D structure by simulating the sedimentation and the diagenesis processes of the rock. So this method provides us with better uh, characterization of the complex structure of those natural rocks, but it does not apply to rocks with unknown sedimentation and the diagenesis processes, such as carbonate rocks. Um, so a more, re a more recent approach is uh, based on machine learning. And uh, based on the literature, there are two types of machine learning methods for 2D to 3D reconstruction. The first one is uh, based on generative adversarial networks. Um, so basically, uh, different uh, GAN variants are trained to generate 3D <coughs> binary or grayscale rock images from random latent vectors. Uh, and the second type method is based on uh, this super resolution convolutional neural network which is to uh, improve the resolution of the acquired images 
uh, using this uh, SRCNN. So basically, uh, the, the major strength of the machine learning methods is their uh, high efficiency. So once chained, the deep neural nets can be used for rapid generation of any required number of digital rock images with negligible computational cost and time. But for the existing machine learning methods, they have some limitations. So they only succeeded in generating small size, low resolution digital rock images with simple structures, mostly sandstones. Um, so the major cause for this limitation is that uh, the, all those published works chose to generate 3D images directly. So uh, the image size and the resolution are signific significantly limited by the computation power and the memory. Uh, and not, another reason is that they use uh, uh, very primitive uh, convolutional models to generate those digital rock images. So those uh, simple convolutional models cannot be fast uh, images with complex structures. Um, the, the third limitation is that uh, the existing machine learning methods only do unsupervised random reconstruction, uh, meaning that the known structures from the scanned slices are not used in the reconstruction. Um, so to conquer all these limitations, we propose our method uh, based on PGGAN. So the, the idea is to uh, reconstruct the 3D digital rock image from uh, sparsely spaced 2D slices. So those 2D slices are scanned at constant intervals. And, and this we use W to represent the scan interval. Um, so the key idea is to uh, utilize the linearity of the uh, latent space learned by this PG scan. So, um, so here is the uh, example of deep fake animal transitions. So uh, in this uh, project, a big scan is chained to generate natural images from latent vectors. So by interpolating between those latent vectors, we, uh, a, a tiger uh, slowly transforms into a cat. So inspired by this case, we think we can also uh, use latent space interpolation to uh, reconstruct the 3D structure. Um, so here's the workflow. So the first step is to chain the PG GAN to generate 2D micro images of the carbonate rocks. So here uh, we use uh, micro images, micro CT images of a nested carbonate sample. Um, and the, the image size is uh, 17, 1720 by 1024 by 1024 voxels large. And the resolution is 3.1 micrometers in all dimensions. And here is the uh, example of the micro CT image. So we can observe three phases. Uh, it, it, the first one is macro pores in black and also um, minerals with micro pores uh, in dark gray and uh, solid in light gray. So basically we uh, chained a PG GAN to generate 1024 by 1024 grayscale image from 512 dimensional latent vectors. Um, so the second, oh, sorry. So here I show three randomly generated uh, deepfake images. Um, and the zooming view of the, within the frames are shown beneath them. So the three randomly synthesized images are very realistic. And the, in the enlarged view, um, the face boundaries are very clear and sharp. So we think this quick, um, the, the training of the PG guy is very successful. Um, yeah, so the second step is to do scan inversion. So which, which is to invert for the latent vectors corresponding to the known slices. Uh, as shown here, given the latent vector Z, we can obtain one generated image denoted with GZ. And uh, X is our target image. And uh, we use the pixel-wise L2 norm reconstruction error between the fake and the target images as the loss function. So here is the mathematical expression. Uh, the objective is to find uh, the optimal latent vector that minimizes this 
I have two num reconstruction error. So we choose to solve um, this equation with gradient descent algorithm. Um, so similar to the uh, back, backward propagation <coughs> algorithm used in the chaining of the network, we calculate uh, the gradient of the loss function with respect to the uh, latent vectors. Um, backward through this generator layer by layer using the chain rule. Um, then the last step is latent space interpolation. So as shown here, after gain inversion, we obtain a set of inverted latent vectors corresponding to those scanned slices. Um, and here, the subscripts are the indices of those uh, slices, and W is the scan interval. So we can do linear interpolation between those inverted vectors to get those interpolated vectors, uh, which are the latent vectors uh, of those uh, unknown scan, scan slices, uh, yeah, of those unknown sandwich slices between the scan slices. Um, so the last step is to map all the latent vectors to the image space using the generator. Uh, in this way, we can form a complete 3D image. So for uh, simplicity, we, we name the uh, slices reconstructed from the inverted vectors, inverted slices. Uh, slices reconstructed from the interpolated vectors, interpolated slices. Okay, so we also want to test the generalizability of our method. So we divide the rock sample into a chaining section and a test section. So in the chaining of PGGAN, we use all slices from the chaining section and the, the assumed scan slices from the test section uh, to, chain, uh, to uh, comprise the chaining data. So by evaluating the reconstruction uh, performance on the uh, excluded test section slices, uh, we can uh, evaluate whether this uh, PGGAN generalizes well to the uh, um, unseen slices out outside those chaining data scope. Mm, yeah, so I'm going to introduce more about the results. Um, yeah, so here is the uh, reconstruction in the XY plan. Um, so in this figure, we show two interpolated slices uh, and their uh, ground truth. So uh, the top one is from the chaining section and the bottom one is from the test section. Um, so the interpolated slices are visually indistinguishable from the ground truth. Uh, if we go to this misfit uh, column, uh, we can observe, yeah, so this is the first observation. And uh, as for the misfit, um, those misfits are nearly zero uh, and randomly distributed within poles and grains. We see some minor misfits at pole gram boundaries. Um, and since the, this test, test section slides are uh, well reconstructed using our method, uh, the PGGAN actually has good generalizability to the unseen slices. So if we conclude, um, our method general has generalized as well to the test data. Um, so as for the Z axial uh, structure, we reconstructed it by concatenating all the XY plan slices. So this is a slice, a real slice in the XZ plan, and this is the corresponding reconstructed slice. Um, so the reconstructed slice presents continuous structure uh, although we observe some linear artifacts caused by the uh, latent space interpolation. And as pointed out here, uh, the pores, uh, grains, and this very thin crack are well restored uh, in the reconstructed image. Um, yeah, and if we compare um, the chaining section with the test section, we think this almost no difference in the reconstruction performance, uh, except that there are a few steps 
core grain boundaries in the test section. So uh, we think we can uh, eliminate these artifacts by uh, enlarge the training data. Yeah, the amount of the training by enlarging the uh, amount of the training data. So again, we we observe a good generalizability of the uh, GGGAN model to the test section. Mm, yeah, so we also uh, extract the uh, core networks from the real rock and then reconstruct the rock. So in this video, um, um, the, the connected pores are plotted as tubes scaled and colored with respect to the pore radius. Um, so we can observe that the real and the reconstructed pore networks are very similar. Um, especially for those large poles in red. Uh, and as for the porosity, um, the two porosities are very close. Uh, the, the difference is only 0.1%. And we also uh, plot out the pore stroke distribution uh, from the real rock and the reconstructed rock. So the, the red uh, curves are the uh, ground truth. So by comparing them, we think uh, the postal distributions uh, were reconstructed um, and the reconstructed rock um, contains a bit less, uh, a bit fewer uh, ultra large, uh, ultra small and ultra large pores and a bit more uh, medium sized pores. This is because the averaging effect uh, related to the interpolation process. So overall, um, the connected pole networks of the rocks are well restored. So I think it is uh, very probable, uh, po possible that we can obtain the fluid principal properties of the rocks accurately based on the reconstructed rocks. Uh, now I want to like uh, discuss a bit more on the uh, scale interval. So this, uh, so the scale interval is actually uh, a critical parameter in, for this method. It determines the efficiency of our method. Um, so when we, do, when we do the experiments on the uh, S-dilate carbonate sample, uh, we, we use uh, these three steps to choose the optimal scan interval. The first step is to uh, chain a PG GAN with all the slices from the sample. And the second step is trial, meaning we experiment uh, with integers between six and 16. Then we can select the optimal one as the one that maximizes the reconstruction efficiency while minimizing the interpolation artifacts. So I'm going to show more results. Uh, like here is the reconstruction, uh, is one reconstructed um, YZ plan slice when the scan interval is six we observe uh, one unrealistic structural discontinuity here. Um, so it is an uh, interpolation artifact. As the scan interval increases to nine, we still observe uh, the same uh, structural discontinuity. Uh, and as the scan interval increases to 10, uh, we, we observe one more uh, interpolation artifact here. Uh, if we increase the scale interval to 16, there's more, there's one more artifact here. So uh, to, to summarize, uh, the blue arrow points to an always present discontinuity. I think um, this is because um, the slices near this area uh, present rare structures or pixel patterns in the training data set. So, um, so this structural discontinuity uh, is later eliminated by repeating the nearby slices multiple times in the training data to allow the uh, network goes through those slices more frequently and then a more linear encoding of those slices in the latent space. Mm, but as for those uh, red arrows, um, uh, they show that um, as the Scan interval exceeds nine. Uh, the interpolation artifact, the number of the interpolation artifacts increases, um, and we cannot 
uh, remove uh, those uh, uh, artifacts by repeating the slices around those areas. Uh, therefore, we think uh, nine is the best, is the optimal scan interval for this rock sample. Okay, so here's the conclusion. Um, so in this study, we utilize the linearity uh, of the latent space of the PG gap, and we uh, propose a three-step workflow to reconstruct the 3D structure of the rock. Um, so the first step is scan inversion. Uh, the second step is uh, linear interpolation between the latent vectors. And the third step is the forward mapping from the latent space to the image space. Um, so for, for the rock sample used in this study, the best scan interval is nine. So we achieve nine times speed up of the imaging process. Um, and as for the uh, 3D image, we can restore it, we can uh, restore it completely from only the inverted latent vectors. So it means significant compression of the image data. Um, yeah, so if the image data are stored as um, eight bit unsigned data and the um, latent vectors are stored as 32 bit floating point, floating point data, the data size is reduced from uh, more than 1,000 megabytes to less than one megabyte, which is very uh, impressive. Um, also, the, those 2D slices can be uh, high resolution, large size SEM images. So uh, it, with our method, we can actually uh, utilize those SEM images in the 3D reconstruction and thus improve the image quality. Uh, and lastly, uh, the PG guy is able to generate realistic, high quality digital rock images with negligible computational time and the cost. So we think we, we can utilize PG GANs to enlarge digital rock repository for future machine learning studies. Yeah, at last, I want to show this video. This is the deep fake digital rock image transition video. Um, so it is quite, um, fascinating to observe the smooth and the continuous change of the uh, 3D, um, of the rock structures. Uh, so we think um, this PGGAN method is uh, very promising to simulate some natural process like rock deformation, cementation, and failure. So if you are interested in this work, please uh, look up our paper for more uh, details. And thanks for your time, and I'm ready to take questions. Thank you, Nan, for your excellent talk. <coughs> so we have plenty of time for questions.